Are you looking for the best cybersecurity career path? Maybe you want the one that's going to pay you the most. Or maybe you want the one that's going to give you the most job opportunities. Well, in this video, we're going to cover all that and more, including potential jobs and salaries to give you a better idea where to go. But first, if you're new to the channel, my name is John Good, and here we talk all about cybersecurity. If you enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like and then subscribe to the channel. And with that being said, let's get into it. So essentially, when you get down to it, there's three different paths that you can take in cybersecurity. There's the technical and the non-technical. These are the people that are going to actually be doing the things. They're going to be the subject matter experts, configuring the tools, and really just doing the day-to-day -day stuff. Then you have the managers. These are the people that are managing the different people. They're managing the projects, the implementations, things like that. Then you have the senior leadership. These are things like your CISO, so your chief information security officer. And they're leading the entire program, and they're really tying the security with the business. Now, one of the major problems with people when they're getting into cybersecurity is they don't understand where they actually want to go or where their personality fits. Some of these different roles and different paths, they're going to align better with certain personalities than others. So first we have the technical and non-technical people. The technical people, these are going to be like your security operations center analysts, penetration testers, cloud security people, things like that. And they're going to be doing the day-to-day -day task, configuring tools, actually doing penetration tests and those kind of things. And they'll also have certifications in those areas. Then we have the non-technical people. These are gonna be people that are subject matter experts as well in a different area. So for example, things like HIPAA or compliance in general, governance, risk and compliance type roles. So those non-technical roles that still might have to know some technical things, but they're not gonna be the person that's configuring a security tool like an IDS or an IPS. Then we have the managers. And something that people don't always understand is that's a different skill set than the technical people. You're not going to be hands on the keyboard in most organizations. You're going to be managing people. You're going to be doing performance reviews. You're going to be managing projects. You're going to be dealing with budgets and things like that. You're not necessarily going to be out there doing a penetration test. And then we have our senior management or senior leadership. And these would be jobs like the chief information security officer. Now, these roles have to think very strategically, so very long term about what they're trying to implement. They're not worried about the specific technology in the near term. In general, sometimes they are, but a lot of times they're thinking about what can I implement today that's going to affect the organization in three, four, five, ten years from now. Just like with technical and non-technical people and managers, this is a very distinct skill set too in the senior level leadership role. Because think about this. You have all these other roles that are in between to get to that person that's actually configuring these tools. So you're not going to have these junior level analysts reporting directly to you. You're going to have managers reporting to you that then go manage those people. So it's a little bit more stressful because you have even less influence directly in that immediate day to day task. And also, too, another thing with these senior level leadership roles is their tenure can be actually very low in a company because when somebody gets hacked, a company gets hacked, well, they're gonna be one of the first people probably to get let go. Now, before we switch to my screen, I just want you to keep in mind that job titles are not always indicative of what the actual job is. So companies will take random job titles and put it on a specific job, even though it might be something else or more of a different type of role. So just keep that in mind when we look at this. But these are going to be some very common job titles that you'll see out there. All right, so if you look on the screen here, I've gone ahead and picked a bunch of very common job titles, and I've broken them down. So between the level, if it's technical, if it's non-technical, if it's management, if it's senior leadership. And I went and got the salaries from Glassdoor, and I went and got how many job openings are listed on Indeed currently. So. If we go ahead and we sort this by the amount of job openings, we see that security engineer has the most job openings that are listed on Indeed. So that's the amount of job titles listed as security engineer and average pay of 111,000. And this is all in the United States. So just keep that in mind if you're somewhere else. This would be a technical role. But then we also have things like compliance analyst, 84,000. If we go ahead and we sort this by the highest pay, which is usually what people are interested in. Highest pay here it had security architect at an average of $153,751 and just over 3,000 job postings. So just keep that in mind. I mean, you'll definitely see that in the management levels, 
there are just a whole bunch less jobs, especially the higher up you get, because there's just less opportunities. You know, every company doesn't need 20 directors or 20 CISOs or something like that. So those jobs do get way more competitive the higher you get. And just keep that in mind. Now on some of these pay scales, I would take them with a grain of salt because it does matter on the company that you're looking at. Because for instance, you'll see for the CISO position, 127,000 is the average. I mean, at large companies like a Fortune 500 company or something like that, they're not gonna get paid 127,000. They're gonna get paid more. So just kind of take that with a grain of salt. On a lot of these non-management jobs, I mean, I think in general, they're pretty accurate as far as the average of what you can expect, especially once you start getting some experience. But just keep that in mind. Now, there's a couple cool tools that I'm going to put links in the description for so that you have access to them. But I just want to show you these so you can see them. So this first one here is the Cyber Career Pathways. And this is pretty cool because it gives you a bunch of different job titles. And if you go on here and you click one, so we'll click Information System Security Manager. This will bring up more information about that job and related functional titles and just in general give you more information. And you can see the related jobs here too. If we go ahead and we click this link here, this will take us to even more details about that job. So since we did Information System Security Manager, we'll go ahead and we will click that on here too. And that will bring up a description about that job. So we're not gonna go through every one of these jobs, but just keep that in mind. This is actually a really useful tool to see some things about specific job titles. The next tool I wanna show you is this Career Pathways Roadmap. And very similarly, you can select a specific job title. So we'll go down here and we will look for the same title. So Information System Security Manager, we'll go ahead and click that. And with this, this is really interesting because you can select different roles. So for instance, if we select this ComSec Manager, and you can already kind of start to see it in that dropdown, but you can see how related that job is to each other. So if you're looking at career pathways and different jobs that you wanna look at, say you're already an information system security manager and you wanna look at another type of job that's very similar, then you can go through this and find the high percentage jobs. And it lists it in here in this dropdown too. So obviously if you have like a 2.5% match, then you've got a lot of ground to cover in order to make up for that missing knowledge. So if we just go ahead and add that, you can see, and it kind of just graphically shows you the comparison and the relationship of those jobs. And then if you go ahead and hit build your career path here, you can see it will actually break down where you're missing and what you need to learn for those specific knowledge points. And the last tool is CyberSeek. Now this is cool because it has a heat map. So if we explore the heat map, Again, this is in the United States, but this will bring up a heat map of where the jobs are at. So you can see this really dark blue, 63,000 jobs in California. If we go up here to Montana, 1,134 jobs. And then if you scroll down here, and you can actually also click on the actual state, and it will go ahead and filter down this information too. But it's gonna give you top titles for the jobs, it's going to give you some different statistics, so the openings. Uh, it's also going to give you the different certifications that holders in that state have. And then if you look at the openings that they're requesting for certifications, you can see that too, like CISP or CISA. And you can also see this category section over here. This is related to the NICE Cybersecurity Workforce uh, Framework. And you can see the different types of jobs that exist. So things like oversee and govern, that would be like your manager jobs. So again, this was just that chart that I had up with all the different salaries on there. And you can match this up with those different tools and kind of see you know, what's available to you, where you're at, if you're willing to relocate, and how many job openings are there. Of course, if you're in a big metropolitan area, you know, there's gonna be a lot of job openings that you can go to. Question of the day, which job roles are you most interested in? Are they ones that we mentioned? Are there other ones? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we looked at several different career paths that you can take in cybersecurity, as well as different job titles and salaries that are associated to those job titles. Remember, job titles aren't always accurate. 
Sometimes companies will use job titles that are not correct, but you have to read the description and make sure you ask good questions if you get to the interview. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.